And though my daughter did not share my blood, my heart beat for her as if she did. But in that moment, my heart nearly stopped. Because my daughter shared not only a bed with Christopher, but family blood. More blood than even she knew. We'll discuss this in the drawing room. When you were dressed. You don't look well. We just buried a body. Take something out of you. Sit. I'm sorry you had to see that. I saw nothing, because it would be impossible for my daughter, the young woman for whom I have sacrificed everything in this life, to make such a foolish mistake. I love him. You will not touch my daughter. You are a guest in this house. What do you have to say for yourself? It's true. We're in love. You can't be in love. It's against the laws of nature, against the laws of God. As if you've ever believed in God. I don't believe in war, yet I'm afraid of what's happening in Europe. One doesn't have to believe in something to fear its potential recourse. Fine. Let's talk about God. What about the Greeks? Or the Romans? Their gods loved everyone and anyone, regardless of relation or sex. Don't be ridiculous. You were the one who had me reading the symposium when everybody else was reading Austin. Christopher is my other half. Enough! Do you have any idea what your father would do if he found out about this? I'm not afraid of Daddy. Malcolm will not understand. All this could be yours one day if your father finds out what you've done what you want to continue doing that's a risk i'm willing to take you don't know what you're saying you don't know what else he's capable of there's something you don't know You are uncle and niece. Half uncle and niece. But that's not all. Your blood ties are far stronger than that. You are also half siblings. That's not possible. It is. Because I've been lying to you. We've all been lying to you. Corinne, I am your mother. But I did not give birth to you. Alicia did. Daddy and Alicia had an affair? Not exactly. But then how can what you say be true? Their relations were not mutually agreed to. Alicia found herself pregnant. Garland had been dead for too long. There was no way to pass you off as his. So she ab abandoned me to you? She didn't have a choice in the matter. We didn't give her one. So you took her child? I saved her name. And yours, for that matter. Uh. And your own. We're all Foxworths. And being a Foxworth still means then you've never lied to help anyone but yourself. Everything... We've discussed here everything you've done tonight. I will never breathe a word of it, and neither will either of you. Christopher, if you'll retire to your room so I may have a word with my daughter.
Corinne. You may not be of my blood, but you are of my heart. I have done everything in my power to keep the secret of your birth from the world. Because that's how much I love you. Because you are my child. Just as Mal was. Just as Joel is. And nothing, nothing you can ever do will ever change that. care what my mother said it doesn't change anything you're my sister i don't love you like a brother that's what i thought say it tell me i love you how do you love me? What do we do now? Let's run away. Tonight. How will we survive? We'll have each other. It's easy to think it's that simple, but we'll need more than each other. We'll need a place to live, money. We'll figure all of that stuff out. You don't know what it's like to have nothing. I do. If I have you, I have everything. I'm serious. If we're going to do this, to really actually do this, we need a plan. Start packing. What are you doing here? No, Daddy. What have you been doing? Your father's will? He left half of everything to Christopher. Y your grandfather was not a sound mind when he wrote that. According to whom? Did he see a doctor? That is none of your concern. But Christopher could have used this money for school or to help his mother when she was ill. Would you rather I had given all this up? Would you like to have grown up like, like some, some, some kind of peasant girl? Half still would have been so much. Half is half of what I deserve. I was the one who, who kept those businesses running when your grandfather was off gallivanting around Europe with his child bride. I'm the one who, who put up with his incompetence for all of those years, and I'm the one who suffered when my mother left. If you acted like this when you were a child, I can see why she left. Did that feel good? Just like I bet it made you feel good to steal from Christopher. That's probably why you kept the will. To remind yourself that you're so big and powerful that you can steal from a child. Everything that I do, I, I love you. Then act like it for once. What? What, what, what about all, all the dolls? And uh, all the clothes? 
the gods. Real love, true love, is about more than just things. I wanted to give you all so much more. What are you doing to her? She, she, she broke into the safe. About what? No, 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 you, t you tell me. Or so help me God, I, I will make you regret it. So now you both want me to fear a God you don't believe in. It's nothing, really? No, it, it's something. It's the most important something of my whole life. I'm sorry, Mother, but I am done lying. I won't be like you or him. Lies are what put us here in the first place. I'm in love with Christopher, and we're getting married. your father. Malcolm, what are you doing, Daddy? He can't breathe. Daddy, he's on the from a fight? You're a coward, just like your father. I found my grandfather's will. Half the estate's yours. We couldn't afford proper medical care. My father is not a coward. You are. Say it again. My father's not a coward. Not just a coward. He's also a murderer and a rapist. Corinne, please. Tell me it's not the truth, Mother. I know what you did to my real mother. Our mother. You told her? You told her? You told her? What's going on here? My father's trying to kill Christopher. Damn right I am. Mrs. Fox, I'm fine. Right. Death will be a blessing compared to the devil's spawn that you two would bring into this world. We're in love. Not that I'd expect you to understand that. Corinne, don't you only make things worse. No! I'm tired of this. I see you, Daddy. We all do. We all know that you don't have any love in your life, and yet you sit there in judgment of me and who I choose to love. Well, if I'm a sinner, then what exactly does that make you? The man who has two daughters in this very room. Corinne, don't. Celia, your other daughter. Everybody in the house knows it. Everybody in town knows it. Because nobody chooses to be with you. You have to force yourself on everyone like the beast that you are. That's enough. 
Don't you mean Christopher's money? You do this with him, you are not part of his family. You will never have been part of his family, and you will never be part of his family ever again. Do I make myself clear? he was doing to you all those years. I saw it, and I didn't say anything that was wrong with me. You have nothing to be sorry about. My choices and my cross to bear. It's a burden I never wanted to share with you. What's important is that you're safe now. Am I? Are you? father you raped my mother you hate Corinne now you listen to me you are not a suitable match for my daughter of course I do no you don't because if you did you wouldn't love her She hasn't told you who she really is. And you know who she is? The man she hates? She hates me because I know who she is. She is a beautiful, selfish girl who got rid of her own child last year just to save her reputation. Seems like I owe you some money. I think it's about time we made ourselves a deal. What do we do now? We'll figure something out. As long as it involves Christopher. My darling, that's not possible. You said you'd support me when I found your love. You promised. Mother, look into my eyes. I love him. I'm sorry, not someone of your own blood. May I have a moment alone with Corinne to say goodbye? What? I spoke. You're doing the right thing. The door stays open. You haven't been honest with me. What did you do? The truth can be more powerful than any weapon. You told him. Once he knew that Corinne was no more than a common slut, he was more than happy to take the ten grand for his silence and leave. You should be thanking me. Solving a problem that you created does not merit thanks. How dare you lay a hand on my daughter? She is not your daughter. She's mine. She always will be. No. I am her mother. This very night I shed Mrs. Steiner's blood for her. If that isn't love, I don't know what is. Look at that. You and I, maybe we're not so different after all.
Everything that was mine, everything I worked for, everything I loved, have been taken from me. I had nothing left. I was alone, all three children gone. Months had passed without word from Corinne. But losing her didn't seem to have made Malcolm change his ways at all. Good morning, darling. Where are you heading? To town. I have a couple errands to run for my grandmother. Would you like a ride? Even Satan is sweating today. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Foxworth, but it should be nice. What are you doing? Grace, do not get in that car. Mrs. Foxworth. Mr. Foxworth asked if I like a ride to town. And you I wouldn't. It. Have a nice day at work. Don't rush back. Mrs. Foxworth, what is it? Soletta. She says she can no longer live under the same roof as her father. That as long as he's alive, she won't come back. Mrs. Foxworth, it's awful late. What are you doing here? I forgot something in the car earlier today, and I... Well, here it is. Mm. Good night, then. Mrs. Foxworth? Did you know that I always wanted to live in New York City? Standing up on a stage, lights pointing at me. <sighs> but I can never leave this place, not with my family here. I was afraid. Afraid of what it would do to them if I wasn't here to protect them. I can't understand. Oh, do I understand. I've wanted to do the same thing more times than I can count. But you didn't? I couldn't face my God if I did. I admire your conviction, but I don't share it. No, oh, maybe not. But I've known you for how many years now? If it's not God's judgment you fear, then it's someone else's. Or maybe it's your own. But I feel it. You've got good inside. I think I used to. But now I'm many things inside. Thank you, Noah. Just do me a favor. If the other things get the upper hand again, not like this. Samuel's cousin is the driver. It would be obvious that it wasn't an accident. The police will blame one of us, and I don't want to wake up with one of my boys hanging from a tree. Of course. Good night. Good night.
gotten to know myself as many things. A proficient murderess is not one of them. Mrs. Foxworth, after six months in the hospital, your husband's hemiparesis has not improved. So he will most likely never speak again or regain sensation in his left side. Well, I see. Which means he will need assistance, eating, washing, dressing. And how is his mind? Oh, perfect. That's all that matters. But perhaps this was better than death, to know he was trapped and I was in charge. Where shall I have them put him? Upstairs in his room. Will he be employing a nurse to care for him? No. Only I can give him the comfort I know he deserves. Like I always said, the best kind of revenge takes time. Welcome home. I know it's not exactly Foxworth Hall. Well, it's better than that motel. Just until you finish medical school. I know it's not much, but it's ours. We can do anything we want here. No judgment, no rules, nothing to be afraid of. Except maybe the neighbors. I'm sorry, I know it's not what you're used to. be my honor. Mrs. Dollinganger. <laughs> Not sure I'll ever get used to that name. <laughs> <laughs> At least no one will ever find us this way. Besides, I feel it has a certain whimsy to it. <laughs> 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 deserve far more than a going away party for everything you've done for me. No. Thank you for making my family safe. I don't know what you're talking about. For you. Train tickets. So you can visit after you become a big star in New York. I will miss you. As well, your many friends. None of them are quite like you, Mrs. Foster. Olivia, please. Mrs. Foxworth, may I have this dance? You may not. Leave her alone, you fool. I would be honored, on one condition. You sing the song. You hear that, boys? My first request. Good afternoon, gentlemen, and thank you for coming here all the way from Richmond. I'm Olivia Winfield Foxworth, and due to my husband's tragic accident, I'll be replacing him as acting president of Foxworth Industries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Oh dear. It looks like he's having another one of his fits. I was so hoping he'd be able to join us today. Please take him to his room. I'm terribly sorry about that. Foxworth be returning. As you can see, he's in no condition to work, let alone be out of bed. The doctors cannot be certain when or if resuming his professional responsibilities will be possible. Now, judging by the most recent quarterly reports... But we need Mr. Foxworth's approval on our yearly tax filings. No, actually. You'll be needing my approval, and right now you most certainly do not have it. Do I make myself clear, or will you continue interrupting me? Excellent. Now... Judging by the most recent quarterly reports, it seems to me the current priority would be adjusting the supply chain back to a peacetime schedule. Yet, I found no evidence that such an effort has been made. Why is that? Anyone? Will someone speak up, or I'll be forced to start calling on you at random. I had a truly extraordinary afternoon. But I suppose you know that already. What a pity you couldn't stay for the rest of the board meeting. You should have seen the looks on those miserable men's faces when they realized they'd be reporting to me from now on. You just couldn't imagine. Or perhaps you can. Their expressions looked much like yours does right now. Professional impotence is really not a good look on men. You should try better to mask your feelings. I'm somewhat of an expert on that, having lived with you for the past 20 years. But now... Now things are different. Yes. They give me control of Foxworth Industries. Perhaps I didn't make myself clear. You will sign these. Or tomorrow I may accidentally forget to feed you. something. I believe this was your mother's. Well, that won't be possible to replace. Everything in this room was hers, was it not? You're told.
wanted to surprise you and Christopher. Welcome home. I adore it. <laughs> but can we afford it? It's all taken care of. Remember, you're married to a doctor now. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Come here, Chris. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I really wish my mother were here to share all of this with me. again now that I control the business. <laughs> Mr. Foxworth seems to have fallen. Oh. Would you help him up? Oh. And that's when I knew. Without my children, look what I had become. I was lost. I needed something to cling to. Something or someone who would remind me what is right and what is good. I needed my flesh and blood. Mrs. Foxworth, I'm Mr. John Amos to see you. Amos, you came. As if I could ever deny a wish of my dearest cousin. I must say, <clears throat> I was rather surprised by the urgent tone of your letter. You see, after Corinne and Christopher left, I found myself in, well, rather a dark place. And I suppose I was finding it increasingly difficult to find the light where it used to shine so brightly. A certain amount of darkness is to be expected. You've suffered tremendous loss. I keep thinking some of it may have been my fault. I should... I mean, that cannot be. You provided everything for Corinne, and she chose a path of moral corruption. Any further contact with her would pull you into the life of sin that she has chosen to live. Whatever befalls her now is God's way of punishing her. But not having her in my life feels like punishment to me. One might ask, and certainly not me, if you have done anything that merits punishing. I am far from perfect. God does not ask for perfection. He only asks for repentance. I would like that very much, to repent. To be forgiven. But you never believed. I also never found happiness on the path I chose. 
Even the scientific mind does not repeat the same experiment and expect a different outcome. Perhaps this is an opportune time to enter a new variable into the equation. And so I did it. That night I prayed for the first time in my life. I prayed for forgiveness. I prayed that Malcolm's soul would be saved. I prayed for Mal's spirit, for Joel's safety, and for Corinne's return to me from her life of sin, sin I was only just beginning to fully recognize. And so nearly a decade passed. Prayer brought me peace. It did not, however, bring my children back to me. Did you ever think that being a parent would be this exhausting? Um, no. <laughs> no. But even if someone had told me, I would never have been able to understand. My mother made it look so easy. Well, your mother was also an expert at hiding how she felt about a lot of things. Yeah. I think we need a vacation. We can get some days off in August, pack up the kids, rent a house on the beach, and just relax for a few days. I'm not sure that's going to be possible. What are you worried about? Money? You can afford it. No, it's not that. You're pregnant. Another baby? Not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> can we handle this? Hey. Are you kidding me? Mm. I love you so damn much. Mrs. Foxworth, a Mr. Woodruff to see you. Yes, thank you. Send him right in. Mr. Woodruff, how good of you to come. I'm at your service. Uh, please sit. Thank you. I can call for tea. Oh, quite all right. Perhaps something stronger. No, <laughs> thank you. I've never done anything like this before. Do you require payment now or after? It's all the same to me. I know you're good for it. My husband can never know. I have many clients who are wives of distinguished men. I assure you, I operate with the utmost discretion. What would you like me to do? I'd like you to investigate my daughter. No stroke of brush could capture the spirit behind your eyes, cousin. Amos, you are too kind. And I've been less than kind to you as of late, I apologize. Not at all. And if you were, which you were not, I'm sure it's because something I did offended your... I appreciate the sentiment. And I intend to make up for my shortcomings in our relationship. Shortcomings? That's positively absurd to think. Not that there's anything of the absurd about you. Amos, I have something for you. I think we're done here. Follow me, you'll see. It was built shortly after the main house was finished. It's generations since it's been used, but with a little effort, I thought we could turn it into something special. It's magnificent. It's yours. 
Eight years ago, you answered a letter from me with your arrival at my door. And you've stayed the course, helping me find my way to God and forgiveness and some semblance of peace with Malcolm. For that, I will be forever grateful. It's been the greatest joy of my life seeing you find faith. This will do exceedingly well. Praying, of course. Mr. Woodruff, how good to see you again. Please, sit. Do you have any news of my daughter? I do. Quite a bit, actually. Um, she goes by Corinne Dollinganger now. Dollinganger? <laughs> what a silly name. Why would she change it? Of course she would. She feared exactly this, my finding her. Please continue. Uh, Christopher is a doctor of obstetrics. <clears throat> Quite successful at that. They live in Pittsburgh. This is their house. Their wedding. They married? Many years ago. And... They have children. What? Four of them. Are they normal? I, I mean, are they healthy? Very. Not only are they healthy, they're so robust and charming that folks in the town have come to call them. Well, here it is. The Dresden Dolls. But why? Because they seem to present as the perfect children from the perfect parents. You can relax now. Your daughter has created quite a lovely life for herself. Stim dolls. To remind me of my part in my family's sin. To remind me that I must grow to be strong enough to overcome that sin. And over the next five years, I believed I did just that. Foxworth residence? No, Mrs. Foxworth is not available at the moment. Yes, this is Mr. Foxworth. I see. Thank you very much. We just missed a call from Mr. Woodruff. Christopher is dead. Car accident, apparently. I thought you'd want to know that Christopher is dead. I 
need your help today. The aberration of Christopher and Corinne was born of something. That something was this place. It was Foxworth Hall. And I think I know how to stop it. Dear Lord, only once one has been deprived of frivolous pleasures and emotional distractions can one focus on what's important. Faith, devotion, and repentance. Today I ask for your redemption. I ask for you to remove the stain of sin from Foxworth Hall. Foxworth Hall now reflects a new life that you've chosen, one of prayer and, and reflection. God is proud of you. Olivia? Nella. What are you doing here? <laughs> Celia wrote about Christopher. And I got on the next train. I am so bad. What happened? Why don't you join me for some sweet tea on the terrace? Well, you could have given those things away. Or sold them and sent the money to someone who needed them. It was a sacrifice. It was symbolic. Well, of what? Of Mrs. Foxworth's faith. Amos, uh, no need for formalities. Um, Nella, this is my cousin, John Amos. Amos Nella. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm sure it is. Believe it or not, Nella used to work here. That is not at all difficult to believe. But now she's a big star in New York City. <laughs> if you count playing a few Harlem bars as being a star. I do not. Well, I very much would not want to interrupt. Enjoy your tea. He's not accustomed to guests who look like me. If truth be told, I don't often have visitors, but now I have you, and I'm delighted you're here. Let's all have dinner together, tonight. Invite your family. Will Mr. Foxworth be there? In his room, where he has remained since you left. Your mobility is much improved. Would you like if we said grace together before you eat? Very well. May God... Is everything ready for dinner? We're quite out of practice at entertaining, aren't we? Yes, Mrs. Foxworth. But everything has been arranged. This came for you. Thank you.
Everything is delicious. Send our compliments to Cook. Yes. And tell Odette she better send me the recipe. She's our cousin. Well, she's so very talented. Everything is always superb, isn't that right, Amos? Yes. Cook does her job quite well. How's Joel? Have you heard from him? Not in some time. He could be anywhere by now. I feel like each letter is from a different hemisphere. Tangier. Excuse me? Joel and Harry. That's where they are. Tangier. Harry writes us every week. That's wonderful. They're gonna see the pyramids next month. Can you even imagine? No. I cannot. And how's Corinne these days? What you got it done? <laughs> Today, uh, for Mr. Woodruff, apparently Christopher was deeply in debt when he passed. Can't say I'm surprised. The likes of him, I would surmise, gambling. Corinne and her children are in dire straits, barely able to put food on the table. Well, that's nothing you can't fix. Olivia's not going to support that Jezebel. Sending money would be a betrayal of God's will. Corinne must suffer for her sins. You think it's God's will for one of his children to starve? Our Lord's will should not be questioned. It should be followed. And what about free will? It is precisely Corinne's free will that led her to moral and financial destitution. Even if that's the case, which I'm not saying it is. Who are we to judge her choices? Faith is about forgiveness. To deserve forgiveness, one must first ask for it. Not that I should have to explain myself to you. Let Corinne reach the depths of her despair and be reminded of how much she needs you. This is how God will bring her back to you. You always said that you were her true mother. This is your chance to act like it. I've had quite enough of this. Olivia. She's your baby. You won't abandon her. Because I know you. I've always believed religion is food for personal thought, not for the dinner table. Mrs. Foxworth, for you. Thank you. Amos? Is something wrong? Father's from it. You were right all along. Destitution brought her back to me. Corinna's asked to come home. Put your faith in God and you'll never go astray. We must celebrate tonight. A special dinner. Let's dress for the occasion. Make it a night to remember. Yes. Let's. Nella. I came to say goodbye. I haven't seen much of you these past few weeks. My apologies. I've been busy. I remember the first night you came here. He was a long time ago. And I knew right away that you were different. You weren't like them. I really don't know what you mean. I think you do. May I remind you that the people of whom you speak are my family? So you're really one of them now? Is that all? Do you wish me to endure your judgment any longer? You don't have to replace one controlling man with another. He brought me to God, and God is bringing Corinne back to me. You reached out to her? No. 
It all happened exactly as Amos said it would. Once Corinne reached a point of destitution, she realized her place was here, at home, with me. I don't know what kind of God you pray to, but the one I know doesn't wait for the people we love to suffer to bring them help. One must repent to be offered redemption. Repenting doesn't mean a suffering. And one small freedom does not give you access to them all. Watch yourself. You are a guest in my house. Olivia, I, I don't... Mrs. Foxworth. That's just it. Mrs. Foxworth is everything you didn't want to be. I'll see myself out. Mr. Amos requested that you meet him in the chapel before dinner is served. Oh, thank you. There you are. What's this all about? You have hidden sin from me. What are you talking about? So it's true. Yes. We are only human. And your confessor. There is only one right way to confess, and that is the truth. There was a servant. She knew about Malcolm and Alicia. She threatened to expose Corinne's illegitimacy. I had to stop her, but it went terribly wrong, and she hit her head. An accident. One cannot be blamed for what one never intended. It's what I intended, but failed to do that is far worse. Malcolm's fall. I did that. I wanted him dead. He forced himself on me. What? Over again. And I know what you're going to say. That it's his right as the husband. But I don't think it is. <laughs> you must think I'm a monster.
dare you? Judge my daughter for a sin you yourself so easily commit, cousin. I am so sorry. I will not be violated by another man. You will leave Foxworth Hall tomorrow. You will not send me out into the darkness. Not until I get what I've earned. I have news. Good news. At least I hope you see it as good news. God has given us a second chance at having a family. Our daughter's coming home. Foxworth Hall, the seeds of sin were planted in a garden of shadows long before I ever arrived at its gates. Those seeds needed blood to grow, and I was foolishly bringing new blood into its walls, blood that I intended to purge of sin. Little did I know then, but my efforts would give rise to the greatest evils Foxworth Hall had yet to see. Why can they pick us up at the train station? Because your grandmother wanted our arrival to be a surprise. Why did you never tell us we had grandparents? It's complicated. You see, your grandparents are very wealthy. Extraordinarily wealthy. All we have to do is be on our very best behavior, and make them love us a whole lot, and I know that they'll take care of us forever and ever. What did your father always want for you? Best education possible. And that's exactly what they can buy for you. Access to the best schools, trips around the world so you can actually see the places that you study in person. And we will not just show up in London, Paris, and Rome. You will show up wearing beautiful gowns and jewels. That's just the beginning of what we can expect our futures to be like. Which is why we need to make them love us so much. Why should we have to convince them to love us? Aren't they supposed to love us no matter what? Well, yes. I only need to remind them of that love. That's all. How long is that gonna take? Where are we gonna live until they're convinced? My childhood home. 
Foxworth Hall. I told you how lucky I am to have a wife like that. I deserve better. In Love with My Partner's Wife. Premieres Saturday, August 13th at 8. Part of Love, Lies, and Seduction on Lifetime. You haven't changed one bit. Well, hurry up before anyone sees you. Why are we sneaking in the back? Mother, this is Christopher, Kathy, Corey, and Carrie. Children, this is your grandmother. What do you say? Thank you for having us. How do you do? They do appear normal. Why wouldn't we? They don't know. Good. It'll make what we must do a bit easier. Now follow me quietly. We must not wake Malcolm. Who's Malcolm? Shh. Oh, you said this place was going to be nice. You will choose to be quiet or I will take that choice away from you. Thank you so much for taking us in. I can't wait for Daddy to meet the children. We need to discuss the terms of your staying here before you see your father. Well, let's talk then. Not in front of them. And not until tomorrow. Well, what do you propose I do until then? I can't very well hide away four young children. Follow me. You are now in my home, and you will follow my rules. The first of which you are already breaking. Boys and girls will not sit, sleep, or recline in any other way in bed together. But why? 
And you will not speak unless spoken to. But you did speak to me. Come on, Corey. You and I will sit over here. There will be no running, no crying, and no fun. Kathy. And you will read the Bible every day. Memorize verses and recite them to me when I bring you dinner. Since when were you religious? Since I realized the error of my ways, as I hope you will do in time. Do you mean to say we're supposed to live in this room? It's just until I sort things out with my father. And then in the morning, you can come down for breakfast and we can go for a walk in the gardens. Okay, then. Just for one night. Thank you, my darling. That's quite enough. 